Jonas, um, Amin, which is not his real name, but is, you know, uh, is a friend of, uh, is a childhood friend of yours. Can you tell us how you met? Yes, um, we met, you know, I grew up in this very small rural Danish village when I, and then when I was 15, um, Amin arrived all by himself from Afghanistan. Um, he was 16 and he stayed in foster care with a family it's just around the corner from where I lived. Um, and he learned Danish really fast. And, you know, we just started meeting up at the bus stop every morning, going to high school and became very good friends. And, but, but you didn't know of uh, this part of his, uh, of his life for a long time, right? No, not at all. Uh, of course, already back then, I was curious, curious about how and why he had come. Um, but, you know, he didn't want to talk about it. And I, of course, respected that. Uh, but it was kind of this black box uh, in our friendship all these years. And when did it start? To, when did it started sharing uh, what 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 is uh, childhood and early life was like? Well, that's what you see in the film. You know what you see in here in the film is the very first time he, he tell me anything um, or anyone basically about these stories, um, and that's eight years ago uh, that he started to open up and started sharing these stories with me. Um, I had asked him prior, I had asked him like 15 years ago if I could do a radio documentary uh, about his story. I have a background in radio and I asked him and he said that he uh, that he knew that he was he would have to share his story at some point, but he didn't feel quite ready yet. Um, but when he would be ready, he would like to share it with me. Uh, so I kind of had it in, in the back of my head for many years that this was something we could do together. Um, but then it, it wasn't until I was invited for this workshop here in Denmark called Anidox, where they invite animators and documentary filmmakers to develop ideas for animated documentaries. Um, and they asked me if I had an idea. Um, and I thought of his story. And I met up with him and asked him if he wanted to share his story with me. Um, and I would then turn it into an animation film. Um, and he was really intrigued by the fact that he could be anonymous behind the animation. Um, so that's kind of where the whole thing started. You know, he, he really didn't want to be in the public eye. So because he could be anonymous behind the animation was really what freed him up to start sharing his story. And so, and, and you think it also freed him up on how he told the story. I mean, I, I, I understand the interview process was really long, right? You, you, you're to, to get to this level of depth and, and, and vivid, uh, vivid memories, it took, it took a while. Yes, it did. Um, uh, I did, I think, around 20 interviews during the span of like three or four years, maybe even five years. Um, and I used this technique of interviewing that I used in radio, uh, because, you know, when you do radio, you, you don't have an image. So you need your subject to be really descriptive and their way of talking. Um, so by having him laying down and having his eyes closed, talk present tense, a lot of people think this is a, you know, a therapeutical situation, but it's really this, this way of interviewing uh, and it's really to create presence in his way of talking. Um, and, you know, every time he would start talking about a certain memory, we would always start out with him kind of describing the location. Um, you know, I would ask him, like, what did your childhood home look like? Uh, what kind of furniture did you have? Um, what did the different rooms look, look like? And he would go into detail about that. Um, and we could, of course, use that to build, you know, the, the visual style of the animation. But even more so, you know, it, it brought him back to the specific situations and he, it brought him back to the memories and he would kind of relive these things instead of just retelling what happened. And, you know, new memories would occur uh, that he had otherwise forgotten. So it's really a, a way of kind of giving, you know, life back to, to things that are in the past. Uh, do you know if he had this, was this talking about this past life with someone else over the years or is it something that it really, because it feels like it's almost like a relief during the film, you know, how the, how, how there's momentum that grows as the tale uh, uh, evolves. No, but definitely, um, he, he hadn't shared this with anyone before. So it's, it's really the first time that he shares his testimony with anyone, uh, what you just saw in the film. Um, and, you know, for many, many years, he felt like his past and present didn't really connect. So he felt like he couldn't bring who he was, really. Um, so to him, it was definitely a relief to finally be able to put his past and present back together and feel more like a whole, a, a whole person. And, you know, the, the story is called Flee, and it is about the physical fight of a, a man who flees Afghanistan and goes to Denmark. But even more so, you know, it's a story about someone who's never been able to live with who he is. Um, when he was a kid, uh, he couldn't be openly gay, so he had to kind of hide, hide that part of himself. And then when he came to Denmark, he couldn't be honest about where he came from. 
so he had to hide that part. So he's always had to hide parts of himself and kind of flee parts of himself. So in, like fundamentally, this, the story is about, you know, this guy who's looking for a place in the world where he can be who he is fully. And I think uh, uh, the film helped him, you know, a, a bit of the way, definitely. And and uh, raise your hand if you have any questions because I I I can I can keep going. Uh, but, um, but 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 visually, uh, stylistically, can you tell us how uh, how did you settle on this particular style of animation? You know, it's very you know it's like watercolor, uh, very transparent. Um, take us through that process. Um, it was really about finding a style of animation that would support the testimony because we were given this real testimony and to, to, to create a style that felt real, you know, where, where the characters felt real, where the locations felt real, where Afghanistan in the 80s felt like Afghanistan in the 80s. So it's really about trying to find a style that felt somewhat honest. Um, and we have different kinds of, of animation in the film, but, you know, our aim was always to make it feel honest. Um, so when he talks about his childhood home in Afghanistan. We tried to be as close as we could to what did Af Afghanistan look like in the 80s? What did his home look like in the 80s? Um, but then at times when he starts to talk about his traumas uh, or things that's really difficult for him to talk about, you know, that the animation kind of change um, and it becomes more surreal and expressive. And it's really because you could sense in his tone of voice, you know, that he became more incoherent. He would talk more slow. Uh, and, you know, when I sat and listened through all the interviews, I realized, okay, but now, you know, what he's talking about, it's not about what, what really happened or what things looked like anymore. Now it's about an emotion. So we had to kind of see that as well in, in the visual style of the film. So we, we, we created this more kind of graphical and surreal style of, of, of animation, again, to feel more honest, because that was really what it was about when he started to talk about these things. So honest, emotionally speaking. Yeah. Exactly, and, and, yeah. and for the and for the for the more realistic part, did you uh, have photographic research? I mean, what kind of reference material besides his own memories? Uh, what, what kind what kind of material did you use? Yeah, we had a, a lot of photographic material, but but you know uh, even more so the, the archival footage. We did a lot of research in just the archival footage, and a lot some of the, it is in the film, and some we just use for for research. And it was really about you know finding you know, elements in archival footage and just kind of draw it and put it into the animation. Like we really want it to feel like it belonged to the same world. You know, even though it's animated and archive put together, it should feel like it came from the same place. Um, so we really use the archival footage a lot. And then uh, otherwise it was really, you know, looking at different visual artists to find a style uh, that felt um, both, you know, authentic to the, the time and place we, where we're in, but also that gave, you know, a bit of this kind of, um, feeling of loneliness or, or, or kind of not feeling at home. Um, and we used, you know, took a lot of reference from the paintings of uh, Edward Hopper for light, light and color and, and compositions. The windows, how yeah. We treat that. Yeah. So we, we really used Edward Hopper a lot as a reference for, for how we would treat it because there's something about, you know, in his paintings, there's something about loneliness or, and, and did, did we, we tr tried to put that in there and we had a lot of, a bunch of different kind of visual assets that we use as a reference and also live action films, uh, how you would treat, you know, uh, uh, how, how does night look like, how does life look like during nighttime? And then, then we had a, a Korean film called Burning where we took a lot of ref reference for that. So we have had, we have a, an art Bible that's like 25 pages of just kind of references of, of different artists or uh, films or paintings that we took reference from. Well, was he part of this particular uh, portion of the creative process or you worked on, you, you know, you figured it out yourself and then you brought it to him to see what, at what time did he see what you were doing with the animation? Um, with the style of animation, um, he wasn't a part of the process. He was very generous. You know, he, he kind of said that that he trusted me to to tell his story in a way where he would re recognize himself. But, you know, still, it was important for me to, to pass things by him just so he didn't, wouldn't get surprised. Um, and so just to make sure that he felt recognized. Um, so I would pass things by him, but he never really had any comments. He just kind of said, OK, but did, oh, my God, this really looks like my childhood home. This really looks like Kabul, the, the Kabul I remember. Um, so it was really just passing things by him. He was more involved in, you know, the, the editing process where I would show him edits and he would kind of comment on if things were factually wrong or if I did lift out things that he felt was really crucial to understand his story. And and it is an actor, it's not his voice, correct? No, it's his voice. It's his voice. So yeah. you 
when at what stage did you use actors um just for the reenactments you know when we go back to the past um and and we kind of um see his siblings like when we're in afghanistan in the 80s you know where of course we don't have real footage from that uh or in moscow uh, so everything that kind of takes place in the past is actors um mm -hmm. and of course for the dub version we have actors as well um but you know the testimony and the conversation between me and him is the real conversation and and you thought originally this was going to be a radio project and then it, it, it transferred to visual right um i i first approached him with the, the idea to do a radio documentary uh but he, he rejected that and then i kind of had it on hold for many many years and then i when i approached him again it was with the idea to do it uh, as an animated documentary um so from when we started working on this film uh it was an animated documentary from, from the very beginning in the beginning it was not shorter you know it was sort of like like maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes um but then you know we started speaking and he gave me this testimony and i could just say okay but this is this story is so much bigger i can't squeeze that into 20 minutes so slowly in the process of making the film it grew and grew and grew and, and ended up on being like 85 minutes do you have any question there's one here yeah um if uh, you could just speak on the difference between um structuring an animated documentary as opposed to a traditional documentary or a traditional narrative fiction or animated fiction. Okay, the question is about how do you different, I don't know if you heard about it, how do you structure differently uh, an animated documentary as opposed to a, a, a traditional documentary or a traditional narrative fiction? Um, I think the major difference is in editing, um, because you know normally when you do live action documentaries you go out and you shoot a bunch of material and then you go to editing and you really built your story in editing. Um, but here, because animation is so expensive and so you can't you know, animate 40 hours material and then start editing. So you first you edit, you actually edit before you shoot, before you start animating anything. Uh, so the, the process is very different. Um, but you, then you, when you start editing in, in the beginning, it was just sound. And then you start to add storyboards, these really rough storyboards, um, which is of course a little difficult to really there's a lot of things you can't see. You can't see emotions in, in the face, uh, like facial expressions and, and that kind of, kind of thing. Um, but on the other hand, you know, uh, because you have storyboard artists working on the film simultaneously as you edit, you can really ask for the shots that you need. Uh, so normally if you shoot a documentary scene and you pointed the camera in the wrong direction when something happened over here, that's just too bad. Like you, you, you have to work around it. Uh, but here we could, you know, get the exact shots we wanted, we could get the close-up shot ones exactly like, like we wanted it. And a mood shot of some some birds flying by, we could get that because we had a storyboard artist who just provided it to us. So it, it gave us a great sense of freedom and a great sense of, of precision. Like we could be really precise in how we wanted to tell the story in another way than I tried before with live action. There was a question here. Yes. I wonder what country they're living in now and what is, is his prof profession because it was so important to him. Uh, yeah. Uh, is, did, you, did you hear that? Uh, what heard, country yeah. are they living in now and, 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 and what's his profession because it seems so important to him? Yeah. So, I mean, and his, and his husband lives here in Denmark, uh, not that far from where I am right now. Um, and the rest of the family is kind of scattered all, all over. Europe, uh, some are in Sweden, some are in Germany, some are in Holland. So they kind of spread out. Um, and the other question was, what is his profession? Oh yeah, um, but he's he's in academia. Uh, I can't say more because it's, it's he's he's anonymous and it's he's, it's going to get really easy to find him if you look for a gay Afghan and then you know his, his profession as well uh, in Denmark. And there's not a lot left, so he's in academia. That's all I can say. And he's quite high up. There is another question there. I just had a question about um, the choice not to sort of animate the ending about his mother and brother who were still in Moscow. I mean, we got the title card at the end, but I was just curious since kind of you got the sense of closure from the rest of the family. Uh, the, the, the question is about the choice of uh, not animating uh, what happens to his mother and, 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 and brother in, 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 in Moscow. And, and you know, it's, it's only describing the title card. There is, there is any other plan um, rather than, than, than this. Um, we thought about it a, lot, a lot in the edit if this was something we should kind of have as well. Um, but you know, it's really his journey that's the center of the story and, and how he continued to flee afterwards. 
uh, even though he's in Denmark, he still kind of flees. Um, so we kind of really focused on his subjective story. Um, and, 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 you know, there's a few times where he tells stories where he wasn't there in the film. Uh, when the dad is taken away or when the sister signed this container. But that's kind of the only two places where it's not, you know, his own experiences. So to all of a sudden to start to tell a, a, a big story of, of uh, his brother and mother where he wasn't there at all, uh, felt a little um, off compared to what we were doing. Um, obviously, this is a very personal uh, story, and, and and it's filmed as as an extremely personal story. But the subject matter is uh, it's you know it, it's relevant to a lot of people, and it's very relevant politically in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit how what, what was the what has been the impact of the film so far in, the, in Denmark, and if in fact it has encouraged political discourse on on refugees and and, and immigration. Um, I think, you know, because the film isn't that political, it didn't stir like a big debate because, you know, it's really a story about, uh, like it's, it's really giving, you know, a human face to refugees. I, I, there, there's nothing, we don't discuss anything about politics in the film. Um, so what I hope that the film is doing and will be doing when people see it is that it will give them some nuance to the refugee story because a lot of the time in the media, you know, the refugee story is told right black and white and in headlines. And, you know, they're always just described by what they need. Um, and here you have a guy, yes, he's a refugee or he was a refugee and he's marked by that, but you know, he's so much more. So to see all of a sudden, to see refugees as being, you know, complex individuals like everyone else um, is really my goal here. And it's not really, about going into a discussion about politics because often, you know, then we start to talk about systems and I'm not really interested in that. I'm just interested in kind of, okay, but we need to look at our fellow, at our fellow humans as being humans um, and not as being just refugees. Do you think this 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 uh, this dimension this um, part of the dimension of humanizing you know make it an, as 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 a human being an individual a personal story um, and therefore affecting people's perception was part of the reason why I mean finally accepted to that the film would you know would be made might be made from from his story. It, it was one of them, definitely. I think first and foremost for him, it was, you know, to get his story out there and, and, and kind of be able to live with his past because for so many years he hadn't been able to live with it. And, and you know, you kind of keep people at a distance when you keep secrets because you're so afraid of, of getting exposed. So for him, it was really to, to get control over his own life and, and get the story out there and being able to talk about these stories that he kept secret for so long. But also, you know, he told me that... Um, Growing up, he didn't have a lot of stories he could relate to. Uh, he didn't really feel represented anywhere. Uh, so for him to get his story out there in a nuanced way was really important because he said, there's, there's so many people like me out there who also don't feel represented. So if I can you know, give my story and it will get out there and other people will see that and feel, okay, but I'm not the only one who feels like this. Um, that, that, that really means a lot to him. There's a question there. I connection to your production. Also, a big fan of anime. And I think that there's a great, great contribution you've made in terms of the anime style that you tried. There's one, there's one film that the, um, Lord of the Rings that's done in a very similar style to your anime, not Peter Jackson series, but there's one, I don't know the producer, but it's a very fascinating style that embraces many, many of your stylistic uh, things. Let me, let me make sure that you're honest. Did you, did you, are you hearing enough or do you want me to, to, uh, to repeat it? 
I didn't hear the beginning, so yeah. The beginning was that what you said it's not. I'll I'll get back to you. Uh, to your to your uh, comment. He said it's not a question; it's a compliment. Uh, you know, and and he he him and his wife are both uh, are children of uh, uh, people that fled Nazi uh, Germany, so they empathize enormously with the with the story and and what happens to to Amin. But he's also was also complimenting you on the on the choice of animation style and, and uh, referring to an earlier version of uh, Lord of the Rings, which is the animated. Uh, um, not the Peter Jackson, the one that was done many years uh, before. And go ahead, please. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And then I interrupted because otherwise I wasn't going to remember everything to say. How the character was somewhat embarrassed about what he went through and how to connect to that. Um, dealing with my parents and, and my wife's parents, trying to extract that background has been something that took a long time to draw out. And like, so I'm empathetic also to the process that the character uh, had to go through. And, and uh, he's also extremely empathetic to the character's uh, struggle with, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sharing the, the story because uh, both him and his wife had had a had a hard time to extracting that from from their from their parents and and so that's another thing that you feel strongly uh, if this feel, feels very close to the film thank you so much thanks and uh, so thank you jonas i i think this is uh, what we have we have another uh, show starting very soon so we we wrap this but thank you so much i'm sorry you're not here physically but this was yeah. great and thank you for the thank you for the film no, but thank you so much. Thanks for coming.